Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Matthew have total 28 chapters. Mark have total I think so 16. Luke has total 24. And John has total 21. All these four chapters in four gospels I will tell you one by one that all these four gospels the authors are not the same. You see the critics of Christianity they are telling you now especially the scholars but they don't like to share with the general people like general uh, technical people because they're not the part of their curriculum but they know and they tell the people plainly and clearly you see all those four gospels none of them are being signed are being signed by those particular writers do you know that none of them are being endorsed those are dubious anonymous books and conveniently, the churches or whosoever were the, in, the, in the committee in charge, they said to death, we think that this might could have been written down by Matthew. So they say gospel according to Matthew. Might Luke, this, whatever you find it, has been written, written down by this particular person, Luke. All Matthew, Mark, Luke, this deuterocanonical gospel and John added later, all these four gospels, they do not pend, they do not have any endorsement by these particular names. And can you believe it? Can you believe it? You have a book, Matthew? Who is Matthew? What is his surname? What is his last name? Who was he? And you said these are gospels. Basically, these were all the circulatory news. All the circulation were there and viral there. And they took it. They write that somebody said, okay, I saw Jesus by doing this. Somebody said about Jesus. And they wrote it and they put in the documents and then they sealed and they make it by the church that these are the canonized gospels. God Almighty is not telling them, show me which very single place that Jesus says that follow Matthew's gospel. Matthew is right. He wrote right accounts of mine. Never. The oldest, oldest book were written by Paul. And later on the gospel, maybe the Mark is the oldest. And all these were written way after Jesus Christ's ascension. So who knows who is writing who? From where you are copying from who? All are these things are dubious. Now this is what according to the scholars. If you try to dissect within their own self-evidence, like the sorry, uh, evidence inside the Bible, you would like to see even a child can tell you that these pronouns, what, the, what types of pronouns are those, subjective or objective? Anyone can tell you. Third person or second person? Plural or singular pronouns? You see, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, they say that these are the Gospels and Book of Acts attributed to Luke. These are actions of apostles. And then all the letters by St. Paul coming later. 27 books he wrote it in, on his, from his letters point of view. But can you believe you are telling us? You, the, the reason why I'm telling you this because Christians, they're worrying about Quran. How, how, how do you worry about Quran when you are, you are in gutter? You know, gutter, mire. You are in gutter and you're telling us and, and you're you holding our hands to pull us out. You yourself in gutter, you know that? In a court of law, you will be charged for like, like something. Plagiarism, because there is a plagiarism in the Bible and fall with, false witnesses, perjury, you will be charged because you don't have any right witness in the court of law and you will be debunked, you know that? The way your documents are, Matthew, who is Matthew? Who is Matthew? Look at our, our Islamic scholarly, every Sahaba, what they mentioned, taking the Hadith, his whole name is mentioned. His whole biography is mentioned. And his whole biography, his friends are mentioned. And you have Matthew, who is Matthew, you don't know. Just Matthew start writing it and you start swelling it. This is what Quran did to you. The dent has been made on you. The dent has been made on Christianity. Remember that. And you cannot come out from there. Matthew 9.9. 9. They say Matthew wrote Matthew. Read Matthew 9.9. 9. Over there it's written. And Jesus saw a tax collector by the name of Matthew. And he went to him and said, Matthew, stand up. Then Matthew stood up and he said, Matthew, follow me. And he followed him or Matthew followed him. Who wrote this? Matthew? Third person is writing this. The event between Matthew and Jesus. If Matthew had written it down, Matthew would say, and I saw Jesus and he was looking for me, he came to me and he said, Matthew, stand up. I stood up and follow me. So I followed him. 
But Jesus was dictating. Jesus said, I, I saw Matthew, a tax collector, and I went to him. And I said, Matthew, stand up. And he stood up. And I said, Matthew, follow me. And Matthew followed me. Simple, basic English. Third person is writing. I would like to know who is this person. Answer my question, please. Answer my question. Who was this person? Even for one second, even for one verse you have it, which is not supposed to be there. Who was he? And I would like to do the same thing which I'm doing to you put on Quran. You will fail. You will never be able to prove it. Not a single contradiction and confusion is to be found in the Quran. Subhanallah. Not a single. Coming to Mark. What I want to say about Mark. Revised Standard Version 1952. They remove whole chunk of the chapter. Mark chapter 16 verse 9 to 20. They removed it. And they say this word interpolation, adulteration, concoction into the text. And for the most ancient manuscripts, these old verses were not there. Mark is also a dubious book. Who wrote it? The author. Mark. They said no. Mark is not the author. They changed this review. They reviewed this all. They revised this already. Mark is not the author. He's not the sole author. Coming to Luke. Luke chapter 24 verse 51. That the verse of ascension has been taken out. They said this was not to be found in the old manuscripts. Ancient manuscript. Revised standard version. And Luke himself is saying that this thing I'm writing and I'm dedicating to Theophilus, my friend, because I'm the learned man. I'm Paul's physician. Luke chapter 1, I'm reading. Big name. He said that I'm taking the accounts of Jesus and I'm going to put this in an orderly manner, in a, in a better way, and then I will convey my message. So, and I'm dedicating this all thing to my friend Theophilus. He's not dedicating to you people, you Pakistani Christians, and you all Christians in the world, especially those with anglo saxons of Germans, all these Western people, all these Roman Catholics, he is saying, I am giving to my friend Theophilus. And you said that Luke was inspired to, to, uh, from Holy Spirit and giving us these all things. How oh, come? Lies after lies. He himself saying that God is not telling me to do. I am a learned man. I am just making a better version and dedicating to my friend Theophilus. Luke chapter 1, read it. 2451 taken out as an ascension. One word is there, it's not supposed to be there, it's dubious. Coming to John. You see, Gospel of John was in disputation because the way we find it, like the, like the verse of uh, this philosopher, Alexander of Philo, Philo of Alexandria. He, the, the one about the Logos and all that stuff. Look, Bible is full of Eastern book. It is the Hebrew book. It is Aramic book. What it has to do with Logos, Ethos and Pathos. These are all Greek philosophies. It doesn't make sense. We find this in literary devices. An English subject, when we teach about English literature, we have these devices, sound devices. And from devices, we have all these technical words, ethos, pathos, and logos. What it has to do with it, with the Eastern language? So, this word, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. This is a copied, plagiarized, according to the, 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 the new the research. It was plagiarized by the philosopher, uh, this Philo of Alexandria. And they copied from him and put into John's book. It is not there. It's supposed to be there. And second, the last chapter of John, chapter 21, over there it says, and this is uh, a very pious person. John, somebody's talking about John, who has written the account of Jesus. And he was a very pious person. Who wrote this word? Who? You said, oh, no, no, it is the end. I know it is at the end, but you said this is according to John. So who wrote this text? I want to know the name of that person. Then, coming to the letters. Letters of Paul is also dubious. First epistle of John, chapter 7, verse number 5. Chapter 5, verse number 7, sorry. First epistle of John, chapter 5, verse 7 has been taken out as a fabrication in Rabbi Standard Version 1952. You know that? And they said that this is not supposed to be there. Some vegetables of Tapsis, where this was a footnote, came into the text later on. So who wrote that word? Who wrote that verse? First epistle of John, chapter 5, verse 7, are the letters. Paul, New Testament. Then, last. All the New Testament were written in Greek. Koine Greek. 
And Jesus never spoke Greek. Paul never spoke. So, I'm not talking about Paul. All other disciples of Jesus were Grecians or were Hebrews? Jews. No, only Paul was half Roman and half Jew. But still it doesn't entitle him to speak Greek meticulously. I doubt. But let's for the, for the sake of our argument, let's see that Paul was a Greek expert. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. How did you get those Grecian Western language and the real language was Aramaic? How? Where is the Aramaic? Where is that original? Did, did Jesus spoke those words in Greek? Matthew spoke words in Greek. John spoke this word in Greek. John 1.1 1, 1 was in Greek. In this in Archai, in Hologos, Prostontheon, Kaitheos, in Hologos. This is Greek. Did he speak Greek? John. All those disciples were the do were the Greek Christian. I don't want to. I don't know. I don't know. Then you're going to say I'm exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating. Who wrote those words? Who translated? Who is the translator? Okay, you're going to say that Quran also has translators. Okay, we do have. But sir, if the translator's name is not mentioned, we don't accept that. And the translated version is not the word of God. This is the close rendering for the understanding of the people. We have Abdullah Yusuf Ali. We have Darya Badi. We have Shija Sahih International. Translators are mentioned that this is translated by this department. And if we have an English Quran, without Arabic text, it is not even the Quran. You will never see it says the Holy Quran. It says the translation of the Holy Quran. But you said Holy Bible with the translations. How can translation be the true word of God? When this was not revealed, did, did God Almighty dictate this in English? English is the West, uh, West German language adopted by these English people coming from North and they adopted this language and they, they put this language in England. It's not even the British language. It's the West, West German language. And then the Latin was there before that. So these words, Greek and all these translations, way came later. So I'm asking you, what language did Jesus speak? What language did Paul, Matthew, if you want to put those people as authors, how come a book come, came about and it was written in a Greek and the origins were the opposite language of East? It does not make sense. It's the same thing. The Prophet Muhammad Sassan speaks Arabic and the language he revealed the Quran was in German. How come? How come? Tell me in the word of God and you are telling and sharing your paradise with us with all these weaknesses. These external and internal evidence you can see clearly that Bible is not the word of God as per se.